All right. Welcome to a another Monday. I have some desk stuff I have to finagle with. Excuse me. All right, let's get this on the way. We're doing another state, as you very well know. Thank you for um, being here and watching this. So let's give you what you came for. Another state. This state this time. North Dakota. It is one of those states. I don't know if you ha actually like quizzed anybody outside of the country. Say like someone not knowing all that much about the U.S. and you try to get them to name all the states. I think North Dakota might be one of the ones that they don't know. It also could I mean there is some uh, movies and shows. Well, movie and show named off movie that take place in the state here. But yeah, here we are. North Dakota. You see here, smack dab in the middle, all the way in the north. You got Minnesota bordering on the east. South Dakota, obviously, to the south. Montana to the west and to the north is Canada. Further, Skaskaskwan, Manitoba. It's, uh, I guess you could say by this image here, I don't say desolate, but uh, the majority of the state's kind of flat. I mean, there is some mountainous stuff, little badlands happening up here, too. It's, uh, it's, uh, mixed bag, grab bag. That, that's, that mixed bag, I shouldn't have said that. That's because, because honestly, that's like saying a word when really there's no point in saying the word because it doesn't, like, describe anything. It's just saying there's a lot of different things here, and that's not a very good way of describing the state, so I won't. Anyway, let's get to the basics as well. It is the uh, 39th or 40th state. We're going to get into that in a little bit. Uh, the capital is Bismarck. It was admitted to the Union along with South Dakota on uh, November 2nd, 1889. The reason why it's 39th or 40th is because that was on purpose. And with general human nature of... Like maybe fairness, or if like you had twins, one was born like maybe seconds before the other one, they're gonna hold that over the other one just to be like, "Huh, hey, I was born first, so I'm older than you, so technically I'm I know more." Um, what they did was first let's take a look. These are the well, they went a little overboard honestly with uh, their root signs because you can look at the way the state is kind of shaped that way, but in case you don't recognize the silhouette of the state. They go straight ahead and uh, name the state right on top of their root marker. So I gotta look for root five. Just seeing if it's visible this far out. It is not. I see a root two, but I do not see a root five. Anyway, we're at the junction of it, which makes me think we're next to Hamilton and Interstate 29. Let's see where I 29 is. It's gotta be going north south. Yeah, here we go. Right on the border. Interesting. All right, we're going to click right here because apparently this road ends. And we're next to a different root sign. So, route 81, which is right here. And then where 5 is, which I believe is maybe on the other side. Oh, here we go. I think we're actually, like, maybe right here. I think I got a hefty seed company. Anyway. When the state was going to be created. Let me let me go down to it real quick. Um, that's geography. That's not what I wanted. History. All right. There was a rivalry between the two states when it was being admitted to the Union. Um, the European Americans settled in Dakota. Okay, we'll just go through the general normal things you think about when you talk about the uh, history of at least the area and the way it worked out was. There were some Native American um, territories. I'll zoom out just a bit so I can describe this a little bit better here. Just going off the map that's listed here on Wikipedia. Did I mention also Bismarck's the capital? I think I did. Kind of in the north east of the state. It was the Chivwa up here. Then a little bit of the Santee kind of had this section here. And then in the southwest here, you had the Arikara. Datsa and Mandan, and then below that were the Lakota. 
and um, they were there. Traders came in, mostly French, um, at least from coming from up north here with the uh, French colonizing over here, setting up fur trade networks all along Great Lakes here, eventually going farther and farther out uh, west, coming to Canada and a bit in the north in Dakota here with the Great Plains and uh, Buffalo, but that was maybe a little farther south, but there was some small in the state here. They would seep down from the north to the south, set up some trading posts and whatnot. Um, uh, a good chunk of this here, if you ever look at the Louisiana Purchase and the territory that it was before it came to the U.S., um, this was part of that. And fast forwarding to when the states were going to be created, that's where we're picking it up now. Uh, actually, it's from 1762 to 1802, the region was formed as part of Spanish Louisiana. Louisiana Purchase stuff. Anyway. Um, European Americans settled in the uh, Dakota territories only sparsely till the late 19th century, and then they build up railroads to faster transport people and goods across the uh, territories up here. Um, let's see here. Congress passed an uh, omnibus bill, the statehood of North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, Washington, and Washington, excuse me, titled the Enabling Act of 1889. February 22nd, uh, during the administration of President Grover Cleveland, his successor, Benjamin Harrison, signed up the proclamations for, formally admitting North and South Dakota to the Union on November 2nd. However, with a rivalry between the two states, that presented a dilemma as to who was going to be picked first. So, Harrison, the president at the time, or the success, well, anyway, Harrison directed the Secretary of the State, James D. Blaine, to shuffle papers and obscure him from which he was signing first. So, officially, the order went unrecorded, so no one knows who he signed the paperwork first for. But, however, since alphabetically North Dakota is before South, the proclamation was public first in the statutes at large. Well, it's just, it is, it's kind of like a, alphabetically we'll let you go first, but uh, there really isn't much different. Um, there is geography of the uh, country here, country, the state. You have um, badlands, as they're called, in the uh, west and upper midwest, I believe, of the state. You have a lot of this. Um, if I can remember actually what it's called, give me one sec. All right. The stretch of the rugged badlands in the west, which are over here. Western half of the state consists of hilly Great Plains, as well as the northern part of the badlands, which are west of the Missouri River, blah, blah, blah. It's abundant in fossil fuels, including natural gas, crude oil, lignite coal. Interesting stuff, which also I can tie back into some more uh, stats about the state. You've got the... Uh, Total land area of the state is about seventy thousand square. Uh, yeah, seventy thousand square miles. Which area rank is nineteenth, which is a little bigger than I actually thought it would be, just from what I uh, assumed it's about the state. I always just felt it was kind of on the small side. But uh, the density of the state, the total population in twenty nineteen was seven hundred sixty two thousand people. Which is when you've been listening or at least uh, hearing the last couple of states we've done. That's the size of some cities. It's like insane how many people don't live in the state. Although that is changing, but it is 47th in uh, population in the U.S. So it's way down there. Medium household income, you'll be a little surprised at this. Uh, maybe it's 61,000, which is 19th, which you may be like, why the hell is it such a uh, uh, high average income for the state? Well, until recently, uh, a lot of the state, um, throughout its entire history, has been like a huge agricultural thing. It's like every county in the state has uh, some sort of agricultural farm on it. It's still a huge focus of it, but uh, recently, maybe in the uh, mid-2000s, 2010, stuff like that, um, a lot of oil was starting to be uh, produced there. and you had a lot of like little small towns eventually end up getting uh, uh, 
Oh yeah, this is, uh, I think on a, may, no, maybe that's just a different old sign they had for the state, Junction of 24. Um, a lot of uh, small towns, say like a Langdon or any, even smaller than this, you could say Perth, the super tiny towns eventually were built up or at least close to uh, a lot of these oil fields where uh, there was even, I kind of forgot what I was looking for here. There was even like talk of like, hey, if you dropped out of high school and like you had zero skills or zero um, aptitude in anything, you can go to North Dakota and you can make six figure salary just working the oil fields. Like it's insane because there was such a high boom. Land out here was super cheap. Um, you could buy a house for a like a paltry sum of money. Um, save all that money up, work like maybe five, ten years, cash it all away. Oh, we're right around here. And you could retire essentially off of working maybe ten years nonstop at a uh, oil field out here. It's crazy. We're in, granted, that's kind of okay. We were like right here, I think. Man, Dan, it's kind of died down a little bit compared to uh, how it had been. But well, it, we're just on the tail end of that boom as far as um, the oil and gas rushes. Uh, is there anything else real quick about that? I can pop off of here. No. Um, as you can tell, since it is in the, I mean, a lot of this looks very similar. Big, sprawling, rolling plains through most of the uh, state here. You get, like, those weird kind of eroded mountaintops. What do we got? What do we got going here? Oh, we got some farmers just chatting it up on the side of the road. We've got, oh, I think you pulled off on the side of the road. Oh, you're mowing. Okay. Where'd that van go? I want to see what country hearth. Natural breads. I think he just pulled off on the side of the road and he's just chatting with him. No, it's just driving away because they're both, you know, crossing. It's one of those things where, like, driving along the road, you see one guy pulled off on the side here and it's making a bit of an awkward pass. And of course, the car is fall coming the opposite direction. You happen to end up meeting with each other. It seems like, why does this always happen when I'm about to pass a car? Um, it's getting hot in my room here, but. That's because I have the window shut, because I don't want any outside noise coming in here. Uh, I'm feeling a little all over the place as far as how this video is going, but I think I'm getting most of what I want across here. Um, a lot of the colonial, or like colonizing Europeans, I should say, coming to North Dakota at the time, around we became a state. You kind of had the same deal as you did with Minnesota and Montana. <clears throat> you had uh, a lot of Norwegians. You had Iceland. Uh, they would come and settle land in North Dakota. Um, it's also currently, surprisingly, one of the top resettlement locations for refugees proportionally. Uh, I think I mentioned this in passing, at least in... Uh, talking about Minnesota, where it is a refugee state, where, um, say you have people seeking asylum from places like Somalia, Ethiopia, um, Sudan. It may have also been uh, Bosnians, Serbians, you know, back whenever there's like a civil war happening in some country, we also with Syrians. We could also have, um, they would come to refugee locations like cities in a sense, states as well. And uh, North Dakota is one of those as well. And since, you know, the population is so small, as I mentioned earlier, it has one of the highest percentage of uh, refugees coming to it compared to its population. And apparently, according to the U.S. Office of Refugee Settlement, in 2013-2014, um, per 1,000 uh, resident, per, for every 100,000 North Dakotans, 68 were uh, resettled refugees, so apparently that's a high percentage. Uh, let's see here. Any other mentions of it? Um, you get federal funds from the, country, from the 
U.S. government to resettle them. I've not actually seen any signage on here, so I'm a bit concerned. I'm not actually going to find where this is. And if you looked at the past two locations, they have been on opposite sides of the state, and they all both kind of look the same. So I really don't have a point of assumption where I can see, oh, these are a bit rolly hills. Maybe it's this part of the state. I'm not getting that here. So I'm just hoping I can get to the top of this hill here. And maybe a sign will show up. But I got 20 seconds. And has well demarcated as all those... Ooh, 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 here we go. I have 10 seconds to try to find Junction 1804. Um, this is going to be bad. Lincoln, uh, we're just going to stay there because I did not have enough time. And it turned out to be not that far off. Um, next one. See, looks very similar again. We're at an interstate, or intersection, I should say. I'm going to see what this sign says here. Gackle. That's a great name. Gackle. Uh, Jamestown. Not that Jamestown. That one's in Virginia. We'll get to that state later, so... If you've been holding out for uh, Virginia, you've got a little bit longer to go. Just looking to see if I don't see any of these out this far. I'm not seeing a gackle. All right, so we're going to go to the intersection and see if we can't see any of those root signs. What do we got? Okay, that's, that's a cursed, cursed image there. This is the American Legion Memorial Highway on North 281. There's North 281. So we're going to hit home and see what that said as far as towns, because I think we're going to get this very well geolocated. Zoom in that way. Nope, a little farther out. All right, so... 281's here. I'm just going to click so I don't forget because, okay, 19 miles to Edgeley that way. So I think we're over here. We're going to look for a gackle at a Jamestown. I don't see either. There's Jamestown. Okay. So Edgeley is that. So we're like right here. So then gackle's going to be north of that. I think we're right here. So we're going to go to this intersection and look if I can get lucky and not get a god-awful image. North on 281. Uh, why did you, why'd you do this? 46, yep. Okay, so I think I have nailed this. I'm going to hit home. I'm really happy. <laughs> you know, sans that, that one. Okay, we are after that road. I think we're 84th Ave Southeast. Get off my screen, please. Thank you. That is not a road. Is this... I don't know if I'm going to see a... Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing that. Maybe we're on the other side of the road? No. I think we're there. I'm going to say right there. Now we can talk a bit more about the history of the state. Um... According to the 2010 census, 90% of the state is white American. 9.4 is Native American. There's a lot of Native American reservations in the state. Um, I forget which state I said previously. I think had the highest. It might have been New Mexico. Um, now we're going to look at the largest, the, the seven largest European ancestry groups in North Dakota. You've got 47% are German. Then it's Norwegian, Irish, Swedish, French, English. Um, there are more churches per capita in North Dakota than any other state. And North Dakota has the highest percentage of church-going people, crazy enough. Compared to the last couple of states we've done where it just seems to be on the decline, not so much here in uh, North Dakota. North Dakota, I think, is also a location of a... Uh, the largest powwow in the U.S. happens to be in Bismarck. I think it's held every September. There was one of the books I read last year that was just awful. 
I mean, it was dry and boring. It really was not my type of book. And it did, it did talk about um, Native American. I feel I should have gotten a better, better score than that. But anyway, uh, the book also took a couple of chapters out to discuss powwows and what happens there. And it seemed interesting. Um, the yeah, powwows are just like kind of big Native American festivals. It's a gathering to celebrate Native American culture, life, heritage. Interesting. Uh, economy, I mentioned earlier, where agriculture is the largest one. Um, with uh, fall, I don't know if I no oil industry, gas, natural resources like that. I don't think it falls under agriculture, but according to a Gallup data, North Dakota leads the U.S. in job creation in 2013 and has done so since 2009. Whatever job creation index is, it's a score 40, which seems it's an arbitrary number, but apparently it's 10 higher than the most recent, the closest one, which makes zero sense to me. I don't know what any of that stuff means, but apparently it's good because they felt like quoting it in Wikipedia. Um, let's see here. Uh, North Dakota added 56,000 private sector jobs in 2011, which are private sectors, you know, not government based. Um, Let's see. It has recorded the highest personal income growth among all states for the sixth time since 2007. I think a lot of that also ties in with the huge oil and gas boom stuff I mentioned earlier. I may have got the particulars of what resource it is, but, you know, the huge uh, influx of workers and cash overworking in those fields is to the best of my knowledge, still legit. Um, North Dakota is the only state with a state-owned bank, which I believe has to do with a lot of their culture, at least going back to um, before World War I, where they wanted to, it's kind of an isolationist policy they had, where um, it was actually a political party that formed and eventually ended up being lumped in or lumped itself in with the Democrats because you got Republicans, Democrats, and it's a Democrat NDA, I believe it's called. Non, um, let me look for it again, sorry. NDA. Nope, I clicked here. F, NDA. That's not what I wanted. There's 30 apparently here. Give me what you're called. I'm clicking really quick, hoping to, ah, fuck's sake, come on. Okay, I didn't see it. I'm panicking now with only two minutes left. I'm hoping that I could have could have found it. By now I'm not. So we're gonna do D E M O C R A T S. Democrat. Um oh, hit delete. Alright, yeah. Nonpartisan league. Pardon me. See, I put search on the wrong thing up there. I'm on the wrong window. Um let's see here. The paragraph goes. Unrest among weak farmers, especially among Norwegian immigrants, led to the populist political movement centered around the Nonpartisan League around the time of World War I. Uh, they first went on Republican, but then after uh, World War II, they merged to the Democratic. And it tried to insulate North Dakota from power out of state, which um, ha is one of the reasons why it has its own state bank. They want to try to isolate themselves from external influence. And that's still... Uh, is around a bit now, I believe. Uh, ba -ba 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 -boom. Yeah, the financial crisis in 2008 kind of didn't hit North Dakota because they didn't really... Uh, let's read the sentence. Let me try to uh, summing it up. Bank of North Dakota, having power similar to the Federal Reserve Branch Bank, exercises power to limit the assurance of subprime mortgages and their collateralization form of derivative instruments is blah, blah, blah. This bank talk, I don't know what it means. I'm not going to pretend I do. All I know is it prevented the collapse of the housing prices within the state in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis, which was another reason why it also drove a huge bunch of people in there is when everyone was losing their house and their uh, income, their jobs. They would 
it was like perfectly set up. Hey, we need people here to work the oil fields and you'll get paid a disgusting amount of money. We're pretty insulated from all the issues happening outside the state. Come here. I'm just going to say we're next to McCluskey because I like the name of that. It's also a pretty good name of a punk band that I liked. Um, we weren't that far. Uh, before I end up summing this up, the other thing I wanted to mention about here was that uh, it was just a funny uh, alright North Dakota is considered the least visited state owing in part to not having any major tourist attraction strangely enough because no one goes there and it's the least visited state in the Union um, it actually still ranks third in their uh, largest interest industry in the state which just was a weird anecdote. But hopefully my frantic jabbering on actually got some information around to you. We learned a little bit about North Dakota. I never talked about the show or the movie. The movie's pretty good. I've not seen the show. It's got Billy Bob Thornton in it. Everyone seems to like it, so give it a shot. I think it's on Netflix. If not, it's on like FX or FXX, some whatever FX ad they have. But for this show... That just means we're done. Feels real frantic getting to here. But anyway, I want to thank you all for watching and appreciating me talking about a state I've never been to, but I would definitely like to. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, complaints, insights, tips, hints, theories, whatever you want, along with your like, favorite comments, and subscribes, those are always very much appreciated you're taking time out of your day to watch these dumb videos that I do that I still somehow enjoy doing. Hope you appreciate still watching them. And I hope you come back on Wednesday for another round of geoguessing. Whereas if you have a suggestion for a map theme or anything else you want me to try it in GeoGuessr or it can be another game or anything else, go ahead and put them in the comments below. I will read them and get back to you. And we will talk about that and anything else on Wednesday. See you then, folks. Goodbye.